All right, let's get started with 2.5. So in this lesson, we're going to learn about absolute value functions and the graphs of absolute value functions. So a couple things that we're going to look at. So really just one objective here. We're going to graph absolute value functions. All right, and so one of the examples that comes up with that is modeling distance, which we'll see in example four. All right, so two vocab words, two vocab phrases, I should say. Uh, absolute value function. And then vertex. Vertex is the other word that we're looking for. So make sure to get those down as we come to them in the lesson. So, all right. Let's take a look at what absolute value looks like. So we've all seen this before, right? Right here with the vertical bars. We've talked about absolute value before. All right. And so we've got some formula, some number in here. 5x or 7x or 10x, right? So we don't know. M. And remember, M's are slope, right? So we've got some slope of our line. But since it's absolute value, when we go negative, the slope flips over and goes up again. All right, so in one direction, we've got our slope. In the other direction, flip the slope over and make negative slope, right? So now we're going down. Negative slope, positive slope. That's your M. B, of course, is where we're going to cross the axis here, right? And so we have our equation MX plus B. And then C, we can have a number on the outside. That's going to be if we're shifting up and down. All right, so if we have a number on the outside here, then we'll end up with some shift up and down here. Okay, and so we'll take a look at that in a couple of problems. And actually, you can see that here. It's up three, and so right here we're at three for our vertex. And there's a formula to figure out what that vertex is. So before we do that, let's define the word vertex. The vertex of a function is a point where the function reaches a max or a minimum. All right, so in this case, we're reaching minimums, which means the bottom. So here's our vertex, right? a place where we have a minimum. Here's another vertex, a place where we have a minimum. And then over here, here's our vertex here, the place where we have a minimum. If we were having a absolute value flipped over like this, then we would have a maximum, but that would still be our vertex. And so to find where is your vertex, here's your formula, negative b over m, comma, c. So let's take a look at this right here for this first one, our formula is really x plus 0 plus 0. So negative b would be 0. So negative 0 over m would be 1. So that's 0, comma, what's the c number? 0, 0 comma 0. Let's take a look at the vertex here. We're going to have negative, negative 4 over m2. That's clean that up. That's 4 over 2, which is just 2, comma, what's our c here? 0. There isn't a c, so 2 comma 0. And on this one, we're going to have negative, negative 3 over m, which is 1, 1 right here. So that's negative, negative 3, which is 3, comma, three right here. So and that's what this point is right up here. Three comma three. So we can figure out where our vertex is going to be. Alright? And then the last thing in there, if we have a negative out front, that means we're going to flip over and we're going to have one of these graphs here. So negative absolute value of x is flipped over and would go down. Alright? So that's the basics of how to graph absolute value functions. So let's try a couple here. Graph y equals three x plus twelve. So you can see the steps here. First we find x of our vertex, plugging in b, and then plugging in m, and we get negative 4. And then we plug negative 4 back in. Right, so you can make a table, that's one way to do it. I like finding the vertex by just plugging back into the original. So let's try it that way also. 3, we just found out that x is negative 4, and so then plus 12. 3 times negative 4 is negative 12, plus 12 is 0. What's the absolute value of 0? It's just 0. So we have a point here, and we've got it up there, negative 4, comma, 0. And if we're looking at our table, that's right here also, a couple different ways to do it. All right, and then we also have a slope. The slope is the number in front of x. So from that dot, we're going to go up 3 over 1. But we're also going to do that in the opposite direction, because normally we would go down 3 over 1 to continue our straight line. But since it's absolute value, 
we're flipped back up. So we're going to go up three and left one. Up three and right another one. Up three and right another one. Okay, so use the slope number to graph your absolute value function. All right, see if you can use that and see if you can get a graph for these two, A and B. Graph those equations. Okay, so once you've done it by hand, now we want to be able to let the graphing calculator do the work for us sometimes too. So if you don't have a graphing calculator yet, it's not absolutely critical, but it's getting close to the time when you're going to want to go get one. All right, so if you're not sure which one to get, come talk to me. I know some of you already have one. Absolutely essential for pre-calculus and, and for a lot of what we're going to do in, al in Algebra 2. So time to start making a purchase. But let's take a look here. If you've got one, here's how we would plug it in. Just turn these things off. So in our Y1, we're going to type in negative. That's here. And then the absolute value feature on a graphing calculator is in here in math. So we click math go over to number and ABS parentheses. Okay, so again, math, number, and it's number one. Okay. Let's get out of here. So Y equals negative absolute value of, then we'd have 3X. Oh, I'm sorry, that deleted. Didn't want to do that. Try one more time. Negative. absolute value of 3x plus 4. We'll close our parentheses and then plus 6. All right, and then we're going to go graph it, but before we do that we want to make sure our window is good, good parameters. So if we're not sure, I always like to start with negative 10 to 10 for my x min, which is my lowest x value, and my biggest x value that we're going to see in the window. All right, not that x could be, but just that we're going to see. And it's a good idea to set your y's to negative 10 to 10 also. Just as a starting point, we can change them later. And we hit graph. And we're going to see it. And boom, there it is. It's a nice absolute value graph. It's graphed for us. All right, so if you have an absolute or a graphing calculator, see if you can graph them on there. If not, see if you can do it by hand All right, for understanding check number two. All right, writing two linear equations. So we should remember this from when we did absolute value the first time. Absolute value can be written as two equations. The normal one, so it just comes out. And we can clean this up and just make it y equals x minus 3 plus 5 is plus 2. We can also write the negative. So whatever's in the absolute value here is a plus and a minus. So negative x minus 3, and then plus a 5 on the end. So we're going to have y equals negative x plus 3 plus 5. So y equals negative x plus 8. All right, so now we've got two separate equations for y. Right? And if we were to graph this, y equals x plus 2. So I'm going to go up to 2, make a dot, go up 1 over 1. Okay? And I'm not going to connect them yet, and you'll see why in a second. The other one is negative x plus 8, so I'm going to go up to 8. 4, 5, 6, 7, oh, it's way up there. 8, make a dot, go down 1, over 1. Okay? All right, now I'm going to connect them. And stop right, oh, look what I've got here. That's going to end up being my absolute value equation, so I wouldn't actually want this part of the line because we're trying to create the V, we're trying to create the absolute value graph. Okay, So hopefully that makes sense. See if you can try it on number three. Write your two equations and then see if you can do the graph. And where they intersect is going to be your vertex. Okay, You can scratch out anything past those lines. All right, real world example. So suppose you pass the Betsy Ross house halfway along your trip to school. All right, so we're going to do a little graph here. All right, and we walk one city block every minute. Sketch a graph of your trip to school based on your distance and time from the Betsy Ross house. So there's a definite typo. Betsy Ross, not Betsy Ross, but all right. So the Betsy Ross house is our origin here. And so we've got distance 
and time going along here. All right, so if I'm one block away, it must have taken me one minute to get there. If I'm two blocks away, it took me two minutes. And the same is true in the other direction. If I walk one block the other direction, it would take me a minute. If I walk two blocks in the other direction, it would take me two minutes. If I'm at the Betsy Ross house, it would take me zero minutes to get there. So I could connect them, and look at that. We've got ourselves a nice absolute value graph, right? So using that graph, right? Using that graph and that thinking, see if you can answer understanding check number four. And that's it. All right, that's it. That's it for absolute value. So any questions, please see me in class tomorrow.